Brothers and sisters, I pray you well. This is Amy from Mount of Olives Ministry. Um, I ask you to, um, first I'm going to say a prayer real quick to protect you guys. Um, I ask the Lord Jesus Christ to form a hedge of protection around my ministry, me, the viewers, the body of Christ. And I ask the Lord to please form that hedge of protection with the blood of Jesus Christ and the angels of heaven to encamp, this, encamp them around us. Um, to protect our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our souls, our bodies, our emotions, our will, our thoughts, us and our loved ones from the enemy. Excuse me, I rebuke and bind all demonic curses, counterfeit tongues, um, spells, voodoo, witchcraft, any and all work of the occult, any and all evil powers, prayers, um, counterfeit tongues, um, potions that may have been conducted against me and against the viewers and against this ministry. I rebuke it in King Jesus Christ's name. I bind it in King Jesus Christ's name and I shatter it in the name of King Jesus Christ as well. Um, these demonic entities, I rebuke them. I bind them in King Jesus Christ's name. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against the enemy. I send it, I cast the these demonic entities and all false spirits into hell and I slam the door shut and I seal it with the blood of Jesus Christ. As far as the human servants and allies, <clears throat> excuse me, working through work, I'm working for these demonic entities. I rebuke and bind these human servants. In King Jesus Christ's name, I strip them of their powers, any occultic powers. In King Jesus Christ's name, and I shatter and strip their powers and bind them in in the name of King Jesus Christ so they can never harm themselves or no one again. And I rebuke and I bind all evil spirits in King Jesus Christ's name and I cast it into hell in King Jesus Christ's name. May the blood of Jesus Christ cover this video, cover the ministry, protect us from any and all attacks, past, present, and future, and destroy any attacks that come against us, past, present, and future. In King Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. Guys, I wanted to talk to you about something. As watchmen, you know, we have to warn the flock. But there may be a time when a watchman, you know, when a person that claims to be a watchman makes an error, okay? Um, and if that person embraces, I'm not saying me, I'm just saying in general, okay? I'm not saying this to anyone. If that person embraces correction and accepts it, that person is blessed by God because that person gained wisdom and understanding at the same time. So if they hear the message and they take it to the Lord in prayer, okay, and they don't harden their hearts, that person is then will be blessed by God. Okay? That's a real watchman right there that is willing to take correction and take it to God in prayer and repent for it, you know? <clears throat> but... We have watchmen's that claim they're watchmen's anyway, because a few bold soldiers for Christ are watchmen. Okay? Five or six of them. They know who they are. I've corresponded with them before. <clears throat> Excuse me. But a person that claims to be a watchman, you know, is doing his watchly duties of correcting a person in error. Okay. But then when you try to correct this person, they block you or they make a video slandering you or they refuse your correction. They refuse to hear what you have to say. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not a watchman. That is a prideful spirit. And the reason why I say this is because I've seen that happen more than once. For me, to me, for example, I corrected a brother in Christ. Um, I mentioned about the tattoo situation and he called me phony in his video absolutely refuse correction to take it to God in prayer and even though that scripture is backed up by what what verse Marcus Leviticus 219 is it I'm gonna look it up real quick guys I got the scriptures I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up the scriptures real quick right now okay I'm not gonna get into detailed discussion of that but I'm just giving you an example okay Um, I'm going to give you an example. 
I'm sorry, y'all. My, my internet speed's like... You know, when the enemy doesn't want you to try to get a message out, the enemy will do everything in his power to stop you. Okay? <clears throat> Leviticus 19.28 You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead or paint or print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. And then um, there's other scriptures. I've done a video about this before that goes into to warnings against piercings on the body, wearing earrings, wearing jewelry, any jewelry of any sort. But anyways, um, this brother absolutely refused correction. Okay, and his name is Minister Paul, and I'm going to be bold, and I'm going to say it right out. Refuses correction. Okay, it's okay to correct other people, but it's not okay to correct him. He doesn't want to be corrected. He refuses correction. That's a prideful spirit. And I'm going to stand bold on what I say. I'm just giving you an example. Okay. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to correct one another. In patience and in love. You have to correct the person for error of sin or error of doctrine. Okay. And... Here are the scriptures to back it up. So we're to judge righteously, okay? So here's the scriptures to back it up. Um, Galatians 6, 1. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore the person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. You know, you might be tempted by the sin. Um, here's a scripture that backs up. Um, oh, here's another scripture about backing up, <clears throat> correcting one of sin or doctrine. All right, um, Luke 17, 3. I mean, if you falsely prophesy or if you do false teachings, that's a sin. So, you know, it's a sin. Right, Marcus? It's a sin regardless. So, Luke 17, 3. So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke him. And if they repent, forgive them. Okay. Um, a man that is, and in Titus 3.10, a man that is divisive after the first and second admonition reject. Admonition means to um, uh, training or like attempted correction. You know, um, Proverbs uh, 27.5, open rebuke is better than secret love. So that's telling you right there that if you, if you, um, if you don't rebuke a brethren for being an error of sin or doctrine, okay, or teaching or what have you, and you keep it in, um, that coincides with Ezekiel 33, that if a watchman doesn't warn the flock, the blood's on his hands. Okay, plain and simple, the blood's on his hand. And then judging righteously, judge John 7 to 4, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So if a person is in sin, and you see that, that applies for watchmen to warn that person once, twice, and then go to the church. Because we're all sinners. We need to repent. Remember Hebrews 10, 26, if, if, we heal, if we sin willingly, there's no sacrificial blood left for that sin. But as watchmen, we have to correct for sin. And, um, you know, sin, so sin encompasses everything. It's false prophecies teachings if a brethren is in sin and they don't even know it just point it out to them so they can you know be restored like the scripture says um here's a here's one that that the lord warns about um a witness that refuses correction a disreputable witness scorns justice and the mouth of the wicked devours inequity so a witness that is not of God. Okay, I'm just going to have to say this. I'm trying to explain this the best that I can. If this particular, first of all, a person that is prideful is, is not of God because God resists pride. Okay, and I'm going to leave that scripture below too, showing that God um, abhors pride and evil and arrogance and he's um, humble or he's graceful to the humble. Okay, but if you're prideful and you just seek self-glorification, self, you know, to be, if you just have self-pride, self-righteousness, rather than righteousness in the Father, and you, if you just seek to be glorified and idolized, that person is void of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's a prideful, false spirit. Okay, 
And that particular person will scorn you for trying to correct them because they believe that they're always right. Jezebel spirit. They believe that they're always right. And that's what this brother did, okay? And um, refused correction and still refuses to repent. And you know what? At the end of the day, what's more important? Tattoos or Jesus Christ? Or your piercings or Jesus Christ? You could say that you repent. You could say that you can ask the Lord to forgive you for your sins, but don't you have to prove yourself through your actions? Don't you have to change? Repent means to change. Take, take action to change. If you have body piercings, remove them. If you have tattoos, man, get it covered or get it, get it, get, get it um, removed by laser surgery. Anything is possible with the will of God. So there's no excuses. If you love the Lord, bottom line, you will go through hoops and fire, you know, to remove that sin from your life and to change. So if a person attempts to correct you and you scorn them, and you refuse to repent or even take it to the Lord in prayer, that's a prideful spirit. And every video or every ministering that they attempt to do, every healing they attempt to do, every work they attempt to do under the influence of the prideful spirit is dead works. It's not of God, does not count. Make sense, Marcus? Yeah. It's in the Bible, correct? Yep. Yeah. Does not count. So if you want to stay right with God, as we all do, you have to accept correction. You take that correction to the Lord in prayer, okay? And you ask him if it's true. Now, there's a difference between correction and attack. If someone attacks you because they don't agree with what you say and they think you're wrong, when the word of God clearly says you're right, that's an attack. But if a person's trying to correct you and they're saying, listen, I disagree with you because of this, this, and this. I'm not sure if I'm right, but... I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Then you take that to the Lord in prayer. So if I'm in error of something, I'll accept your feedback and I'll take it to God in prayer. Because I'm not going to disobey the Bible and refuse correction. I will take it to the Lord in prayer and ask God if what you say is true. Because with all due respect, I don't trust anybody but God. I'm going to take you to some scriptures that says the Lord blesses those who accepts correction. Because a lot of people just, they just refuse correction. And then they try to make an expose video to try to discredit you. Okay. Um, the Lord will use a true watchman to correct you. Okay. He will use a watchman to correct you. Let's see. Um, I'm going to take you to. <clears throat> so if you if you're being corrected or chastised by God through a watchman or even the Lord himself. OK, don't take it as a bad thing. The Lord loves you enough to correct you. He will use different avenues. He'll even warn you personally. Like you'll hear that little nudge in the back of your head, a little voice telling you this is wrong. This is wrong. Nine times out of ten, that's the Holy Spirit telling you that what you're about to do is a mistake or that it's wrong. You see, Job's five, Job, I'm sorry, five seventeen. Behold, happy is the man who God correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Okay. Um. Let's see. I'm still here, you guys. I'm accessing the online KJV. So, um, you guys can get it. Because when you don't accept correction, you refuse to hearken on to the words of God and take it to the Lord in prayer, um, you're being rebellious. Remember what happened with the Pharaoh when Moses was attempting to um, liberate the Israelites. I sh I'm sorry, when the Lord was attempting to use Moses to um, is to liberate the Israelites. Proverbs, I'm going to take you to that scripture next, and I'm going to leave these scriptures in the description box below. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. Okay? Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. But 
he that hateth reproof is brutish. So that's telling you right there that if a person accepts correction, they gain knowledge, they love knowledge, they love to learn, okay? And henceforth they will be blessed. But a person that hates being reproved, in other words, corrected, is brutish, is foolish, is stubborn, prideful. And yes, as my son pointed out, rebellious. Both my kids pointed that out. So this is not to um, be, this is not to be, um, this is not to, to, to make you guys feel bad. This is for the majority of the body of Christ, okay? Let me tell you something. There are days that I have to sit, like that other video that I did, okay, regarding impartiality. I kept saying partiality, you know? When I meant that the Lord, um, the Lord, see, I'm doing it again, you guys. <laughs> I'm doing it again, you guys. Um, th there's no partialities with the Lord. Correct, Marcus? Yeah. No okay. respect of persons. Everybody's the same. No res Prophets, everybody. Yeah, no respect of persons. Everybody's the same. Okay. So in other words, the Lord is what? Impartial. The Lord's impartial. He judges everybody no matter who they are. Okay? So I got those two words mixed up. Partiality means um, when someone is partial, they show favoritism, right? Yeah. When someone's impartial, they show no favoritism, no respects to anybody. Everybody's in their eyes will be judged. Okay? You know, they'll be judged by God because God's the final judge. So, you know, so like I said, if you know, if you if you feel like I'm making an error. I'll take it to the Lord in prayer. Because like I said, with all due respect, I don't trust man. And I expect you to do the same. If I am attempting to correct you, or another watchman for that matter, just take it to God in prayer. Because God is the final authority. Okay? All right, let's see. Still going through the scriptures, you guys. You know, so I, I mean, like I said, I see that a lot. Like, you try to correct someone, they block you or whatever. I mean, I can understand if that person's attacking you. But if you're correcting them, like the Bible says, um, why is that person not, not even bothered to listen? That's a prideful spirit, guys. Prideful spirit. And when a person makes an entire video about themselves saying that, you know, trying to, trying to like, gain credit. And prove that they are the watchman or prophet or prophetesses of God. Um, when they try to gain credit by, by going through every single or most, a lot of their videos telling you, well, this vision passed, this vision passed. And this person prophesied that, um, I don't know, something about being anointed by God or whatever. Look, God decides who he's going to anoint, okay? Bottom line is, if you're making a video about yourself and you're and you're trying to give credit to yourself that you're a true prophet or whatever of God by saying this vision came to pass, it's a hundred percent accurate. You're glorifying yourself and you are a prideful spirit. And I'm going to tell it like it is. If you don't see that, you're deceived. You got scales in your eyes. That time that you're saying that you had a vision and it came to pass and this vision came to pass. And you are 100% accurate. That time needs to be used to praise and glorify the Lord and spread the gospel rather than spreading the gospel of yourself. And I'm not saying this into the entire body of Christ. I'm only directing this to those that actually do videos about visions or dreams that they claim, they claim came to pass. When all we know, they could have just fabricated that. How do you know if that vision or dream came to pass? How do you know? That's why you need to try and test every spirit and you take it to God in prayer. You ask God because God's the final authority. Don't believe these people that their visions and dreams have passed and they're 100% accurate. That's a prideful spirit and a very big red flag that what you're, they're telling you is not true. That's why you need to try and test every single spirit, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'm stern. I know I'm bold because I love Jesus Christ. I also love the saints. Okay, I'm going to take you guys to uh, Proverbs 23, 13. And then we're going to get ready to wrap this up, or I should say I am. 
13 and 14, KJV version. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. That's correcting children. Um, I'm going to talk about that just a little bit, but um, we as parents are responsible on how our children turn out. So if you have your kid prophesying, if your kid knows about heaven and hell, then he's subject to the same judgment as an adult. Correct, Marcus? Okay. So if that child falsely prophesied, that child will be classified as a, as a false prophet. And a lot of people get that scripture mixed up that, says, that warns when Jesus Christ says, don't offend their little ones. When Jesus Christ says, don't offend his little ones, because the children, you know, you have to come to him like a child, humble and, and faithful and innocent. The reason why Jesus Christ says that, don't offend his little ones, is because those are kids that are innocent and that do not know about heaven and hell, do not have the knowledge of good or evil. Correct, Marcus? Mm -hmm. My son's really good with the scriptures, and I got the scriptures right here with me, too. That's what that is. But if your child, I mean, if your child has the knowledge of good and evil, heaven and hell, that child is subject to judgment. That child is expected to live holy as Jesus Christ did. There are children in hell, ladies and gentlemen, that were rebellious to their parents. So we as parents are expected to discipline our children accordingly and admonish them and train them to live godly. And that includes not falsely prophesying. Having that, you know, not falsely prophesying, correcting the child when necessary. Because it says right here, if, it says right here, withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Then, shalt, then thou shalt beat, then thou shalt Beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. That is talking about parents and children. That verse proves right there that if parents correct their children and their chil and they teach their children right and their children listen, that child will not go to hell for being rebellious. Do you hear that verse, Marcus? Yes. Yeah. That proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that children can go to hell. Children that know the knowledge, that have the knowledge of heaven and hell, and that know the difference between good and evil, good and bad. They are subject to the Lord's judgments. But we as parents, so they don't go down the wrong path, we have to raise them the right way. But if there's parents that are teaching their kids to falsely prophesy, guess what? The parents are going to be held accountable. Isn't that right, Marcus? Yeah. They will be held accountable. That child's blood would be on your, your own hands. Just like a watchman. Just like a watchman that has to warn the flock. If we don't, that child, that the blood of all those souls that could have been saved will be on our hands. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I bring messages to you as the Holy Spirit leads. Okay. I pray on this in the spirit. I of course pray a, a prayer, pray a prayer of protection as well. Oh, and the scriptures are, um, are meant for profitable teaching, reproofing and correction. Okay. And, um, I'm going to read something to you real quick. Timothy 3.16, KJV version. All scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine or reproof, for correction or instruction in righteousness. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We are to be watchmen. We are to correct. We are to accept correction. Take it to the Lord in prayer because if we accept correction and embrace it and take it to God in prayer, you will be blessed. Okay? Um, Jesus Christ is not the author of confusion. He's the author of our faith. And, and, of course, the word of God, he is not the author of confusion. Okay, Satan is. Satan is the father of lies. So please, ladies and gentlemen, just be careful when you're um, looking at videos and stuff and you notice that a person's in error, approach them in person. Um, I'm sorry, approach them privately once and then with the, first, with the one witness and the second time with two witnesses and then the third time, take it to the church. 
But just notice, if you try to correct that person and they refuse correction, but it's okay for them to correct others, but they don't want to accept correction, that's a prideful spirit. That is a prideful spirit. You are to steer clear from them because that particular person is obviously sinning willfully. They're refusing to repent, and that person is literally on their way to hell. Okay, And any works that they're doing that's under the influence of that prideful spirit, that Jezebel spirit, that spirit of idolatry, um, et cetera, et cetera, that false deceptive spirit is dead works because it's not led by the Holy Spirit. It's not influenced by the Holy Spirit, and that person is void of the Holy Spirit. All right, guys. Um, as for my trials, just a quick update. Um, praise be to God. Trials are trials. You know, you, you, life has hardships in it. What can you do, right? The Lord's helping me out of it. Praise God. Praise God that that it's a gradual process. You know, it's what it is. But, you know, I love God. And, um, you know, everything I ask for is for the glory of God. Another warning I want to put out to you that when you pray, please make sure you're asking that that is for the glory of God, not for the flesh. I'm sorry? First Kings chapter uh, 3 talks about, talks about how to pray. I used to chapter 8. And, and then, okay, um, first, first Kings chapter 3 talks about um, like, like how to pray. First Kings chapter 3. I'm going to go there real quick because um, I, I know I didn't intend to talk about that. Um, but, hey, it is part of the correction process, right? Um, when you pray, don't ask for, like, things of the flesh. If you're going through financial hardship, you can ask God to bless your finances. But you can ask him to give you what you need, like to pay your basic bill expenses but not what you want. So give you what you need to pay your basic bill expenses so you can um, help your local church out or so you can donate to a particular charity or you can help someone in need or you can help keep your ministry up. You see what I'm saying? Just do something that's supposed to help some, just, just as long as you're asking for a prayer, this is my belief, that is meant to help the body of Christ and most importantly, help Jesus Christ help the kingdom of heaven as long as it's for the glory of God that's the correct way to pray now I know that you pour your heart you know I pour my heart out to God okay but I'm not gonna sit in that sit there in that prayer and say to God cuz I go to God for everything guys I'm not gonna sit here and say to God God I want that nice car or I want that I want to win the lottery because in the Bible it says don't love the things of this world. You must love the things of heaven. Remember? Yeah. Hate don't, this life. You know, you have to hate this life, love the things of the world. Because this life is nothing but a blink of an eye and is temporary. And heaven and hell, yes, are real. So, um, I'm going to, I'm in chapter, I'm in uh, First Kings, Kings chapter 3. What verse is it? I think it's starting at verse 11 around here. It, 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 Look at what Solomon a asked for, and then, and then, and then look at the look okay. response. Guys, First Kings chapter 3, it says, um, And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked for riches, ask riches for thyself, nor ask the life of thine enemies, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, I'm sorry, but ask for thyself understanding to discern judgment. So you can ask God for discernment, spiritual wisdom, um, knowledge of the scriptures, a gift of faith, to help others, to help you to be patient to others. And like I said, if you are going through hardships, you can ask for blessings for your finances as long as you buy what you, you get what you need to help you pay your basic bills until the, the the Lord's return. And so you can use also those funds to run your ministry. If you're running a soup kitchen or a food bank, or if you volunteer, or if you donate to a charity, or if you're helping out a ministry, right, Marcus? Yeah. Cause like I said, my son's pretty good with the scriptures and I have the scriptures right in front of me. Um, let's see. Verse 12. Behold, I have done according to the, thy words. Lo, I have given a wise and understanding heart. So there was none like, 
thee before thee, neither have thee shall any arise like unto thee. So in these two in these two particular verses, this gentleman or young lady was, was, it, was King Solomon. it was King Solomon. King Solomon didn't pray for things of the flesh. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for stuff for himself. He asked for things that was for the benefit of the kingdom of God. Like he asked for discernment, to discern judgment. And it was King Solomon. Remember that parable about the about the baby? About um, the parable about the baby where um, the two women were fighting over a baby. And I read that. And it was King Solomon. Two women were disputing like over... One second. Two women were disputing, disputing, and I thought about it before I even looked at that. You know, I just want to get this concept out. Two women were disputing over a child. And the way King Solomon judged them was that he tested both women to see if 